up, YouTube? YouTube? It's your boy TJ. And your girl Crystal. And we are back again with another banger. And today, y'all, it's about to go down. We're going to be reacting to King Von the Soft Spoken oh, Assassin. All right? Ooh. Now, this is a documentary. Oh. Uh, I'm ready to go ahead and get into it though. Let's do it. Let's go. It's King Vine, the soft spoken assassin. Let's go. <laughs> This hair was super short. Lil, Lil Yondo right there, This hair there, was man. super short. Yeah. Back to that breaking news live from Chopper 2. A mass shooting. At least six people shot. This all happening at 65th and King Drive in Parkway Gardens. The age ranges of those people ranging from 14 to 23 years old. Hey, my man, I'm coming. Please don't. His name is Dave. Damn yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Hell no, nigga. Trust me. He yeah. ain't got no reason to go out there. He's begging us not to come. Mean, yeah, you? man. Hey, unless y'all get we shit together out here. there. Unless y'all get niggas shit together and y'all unite, nigga. You ain't got to worry about me going out there. Okay. AKA King Vaughn. He's been on the streets for too long. The one off the street today. You guys ready? Right. This video is so cold. Right. So probably the person that I get the oh, most yeah. requests to do a video on. And the rapper I've been rocking with for a while now is King Von. No doubt the most demonic figure that's come out of Chicago since Flash. the drill music wave Damn. in the 2010s. Fans are really yeah, enamored yeah, with his storytelling and music videos. But for the life of me, I don't know how King Von is a free man. I mean, bless him. All blessings to him. He's somehow been able to two see slide and dodge every single case that's so kept this, his mouth shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is before all that shit popped off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before he lost his life. You know what I'm saying? Salute to King Von. R.I.P. King Von, man. For real, man. A real goat, man. A real one, you did. Been thrown at him since he was 15. And while his partner Rondo was toting a bazooka on the gram, King. Damn. Damn. You know what that looked like? A damn. One of them things at the uh at the bank that suck in your thing. What's sucking your thing at the bank? Pause. Ain't that what they say? Pause. In New York? Pause. Yeah. Pause. Pause. Uh, the day when you put your the um uh, that thing when you the make a deposit yeah, yeah. The shoot the, the shoot that's yeah, what that looked like. Your shit. Look yeah. like you just took that shit right out the damn the shoot wall. Yeah, that's a big ass bazooka, man. That shit will throw your ass back. Tom was on Twitter arguing with a mortal enemy over how many bodies they each got, and this was. This nigga said, you a bitch, and I think I'm older, I guess he was saying older than you, and got more bodies and attempts than you, so you must. Tell me the fuck out of the police, right? Yeah, they couldn't stand it. Chill. See, in Chicago, uh, he said only 20% of murders yeah. ever get proven. I thought I said, I'm just trying to chill. Nah, nah, I think it said kill, but he probably took the C at. Nah, I said, I'm just trying to kill. Each gun. And this was trolling the fuck out of the Chuck police, right? They couldn't stand it. See, in Chicago, only 20% of murders ever get proven. Eight That's crazy. 20% of murders ever get proven? Why would you want to move out to a spot to where if a nigga die, it's like we don't know who did it. 80%. Hell yeah, man. That's, hey, man. Salute to everybody in Chicago, man. Things gotta get better out there for real, bro. For real. Just, just being honest. Eight percent go unsolved. Twenty years for the murders, plus the gun times. You know, that's twenty-one years. So that's forty-one years. That's just for the murder. Now I got two or ten murders, and you need all those charges. You were acquitted. Yeah, I'm okay. Now we're gonna get into all of this, but before we do, let me show you my song of the day. This is Mark Battles. Let's go. Ain't been happy in a while. I be staring in the mirror, trying to force myself to smack. How you expect it? Specifically, the Parkway Gardens in the South Side. But you probably know his old block. Now, not only is this the home of Chief Keith and King Vaughn, it's also the home of the former First Lady, Michelle Obama, who, when she looks back at her experience, says it was never as bad as it is now. The area has always been a huge war between two factions, the BDs and the GDs. And this war has been going back since at least the 90s. But back then, there was more structure, it was organized, and it was mostly a battle over right. drug trade. The BDs controlled a massive 16-story housing complex just two minutes away from Old Block, posting snipers on the roof to protect their drug dealers. Look out. They no back had snipers on the roof. 
The gang effectively took over a 16-story Chicago Housing Authority building. 16-story. Chicago. Damn, they took over the whole skyscraper. Can you imagine living on the 16th floor every day you got a groceries up that thing what furniture like how do furniture, you get damn. furniture up there you got to call somebody like the damn um move moving boy they got to get a crane or something the to damn make you haul that's ridiculous damn, um, I don't snipers know. On. we didn't read the rest of it posting snipers on the roof to protect dealers and making as much as 45,000 per day selling crack, cocaine, mm. and heroin. Hood rich! Nigga, we made were equipped with night vision goggles, according to the complaint. Night vision goggles. Niggas was equipped. Ready for war. Snipers. Yeah, from police. That's crazy. That's crazy. Nigga had snipers on top of the roof ready, y'all, and night vision goggles. They were looking for police, looking for op niggas. You know and see, saying? this was back in the day. They was organized. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, way before the young niggas <clears throat> tried to. That's to they off. locked all the old ones up. Yeah. The roof to protect their drug dealers. Lookouts were equipped with night vision goggles, and the entire organization was pulling in three hundred thousand dollars a day for damn, damn near fifteen a years. A day. Three hundred for rats? fifteen years. That's crazy. Three hundred thousand. Boom. <laughs> Three hundred grand. That's over a quarter million dollars a year for a <coughs> housing project. Shit, I take crazy. over that motherfucker too. A quarter million, man. Look, that's over a quarter million. That's insane. These were run like a corporation. Money was laundered through investments into apartment buildings, a record label called MOB, car wash, <laughs> and a nightclub <laughs> in Atlanta. But the leadership was taken out in 2004 <coughs> with a massive police raid. Their headquarters was permanently oh. closed and eventually demolished. 50 people were charged. Whole leadership gone. All the BDs migrated to Oblock and created oh, alliances God. with the sets around the area to go against their rival gang, the GDs. Now the GDs, which stands for Gangster Disciples, also had their leadership taken down. And now neither of the two gangs Yeah, had that's when Oba got taken down, man. Yep. Yeah, man. Structure anymore coming from the top to the bottom. It's basically just kids running around with a profound hatred for each other, trying to blow each other's heads off. That's, and this sad. that's, that's what's going on now. That's sad. You right? That's man. sad. Cause yeah, that's exactly what happened. All the old heads got locked up. Their their uncles and dads and everybody else, and they're confused as hell. They got all this like hate. They've heard nothing but the you know the the rivalry mm -hmm. and. With no guidance, they're just like I. I hate. I have to hate you because that's how I've grown up knowing that I'm supposed to hate you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I've seen, <clears throat> and a lot of young niggas, they ain't really going into the literature or the knowledge that they that they teach you in the game. Cause I don't think all this killing going around about all this shit. If niggas really going by the knowledge, it doesn't matter about the knowledge. They don't care. I mean, it's just that's what I'm saying. But don't they have structure and shit like that? There's no structure. Certain structure, man. They gotta start going. Out. I think the young niggas just, just calling out shit. Comment down below if uh, they're how rebelling. Good your you know? If your neighborhood is fucked up. It's like how you rebel against your parents or whatever. Yeah. They just rebelled against, against the, the OGs mm -hmm. and everybody else. Right, we're going to Escalated even do. further in the 2010s with Chief Keef and the rise of drill music. Chief Keef, Rondo, Lil Reese. Salute to Chief Keef. Most of the people who saw success during the height of the drill scene were all black disciples. The gangster disciples had very little representation in mainstream music. Their most notable figures were mm. FBG Duck, Lil yep. J, Lil Jojo. So the fact that Chief Keef and Free Lil J, man. Free Lil J, man. Oh, yeah. Lil J, go oh, hard. I'm about to show you some of this. Yeah, shit. I haven't heard yeah. nothing. Yeah. Oblock were able to control the airwaves and the popular sound made it so they could put super disrespectful <clears throat> lyrics towards the gangster disciples in their songs and it would become mainstream. The best example is Tuka. Man, bro, that that part. That's crazy. He got disrespect about this, man. It's crazy, man. That's why shit crazy, bro. They disrespect your dead friends, family members, all, bro. You can't 
can't ever get over nothing if people get getting disrespected. So definitely, man, show some more love to people, man. Because death became the focal point for a lot of violence. Because the gang members that killed Tuka then used social media to really insult his men. In this case, you have this young man actually in his coffin, right. and this image has also been defiled. See, Tuka was a deceased 15-year-old boy that mm -hmm. Chief Keith and Dirk mm -hmm. would constantly mock in their so You must be stuck on dumb, stupid man. We done. Your ass in the world, Tuka with his dead ass little dick. I'll dig him up and re smoke him. Man, this shit crazy, bro. And the lyric became so popular, you had rappers like Lil Pump that. who had nothing to do with the situation. He's from Miami. You had Young M.A. who's from New York. And even NLE Chopper who's from Memphis. They would use Tuca in their songs or in everyday life without even knowing what it meant. Like, you recently said some shit about Lil Pump. Uh -huh. Did he use the, the smoking too a lot? To this day, he probably think that everything I'm doing. But no, when I see you, I'm gonna slap you. You know, you know, Vlad. Smack the shit yeah, out of you know, ass. Vlad trying to start shit. They, Vlad known for trying to start shit. Young M.A. said it in, in her verse, and then, and then she apologized for it. And that's all I wanted. See, the hatred between the GDs and the BDs ran so deep. The feud was so strong. You even got King Vaughn on video teaching a little kid how to shoot a water gun I while saying this. F Tuka. Fuck Tuka. Fuck Tuka. Yeah. Shoot him in his head. Boom. Fuck Tuka. Say it. Now, the death of this kid, Tuka, spawned something that was never before seen. A 17-year-old female assassin named Chikaira, who created a social media account dedicated to avenging his death. She was known to her rival. That's K.I. K.I. was a beast. They said Damn. she killed niggas. Yeah, she with it, though. She with She killed niggas and everything. Her and King Von got into it, though. They said they, they flirted a lot. I don't know. They was just beefing. I think that was beef. They was just using code words. Damn. Seventeen year old girl, she was, yeah, but she yeah. had bodies for real. Yeah, she was a killer, man. You out there, man? A lot of people out there is killers, man. You know you ain't gonna get caught for that. That's another motherfucking occupation. That's you know what I'm crazy. saying? That's about as that's about as legal. <clears throat> killing out there is about as legal as gambling, running a number house that's or something crazy. like that. Crazy or or pimping. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, man, shit. Like, like, Pippin, Burley, niggas, you know, niggas really ain't getting caught for shit like that. And that's what the same shit out there. I don't think they want to want shit then. And the police. Apparently not. Hell no. Nah. <clears throat> There's. I mean, I don't even know. Police shit. We got to end this shit ourselves, man. We don't need police help. You know what I'm saying? All they going to do is try to lock a nigga up. So what we need to do is just stop shit ourselves, you dig? Well, as somebody who was willing to, to shoot first, to ask questions later, it's all over the internet. Shakira was on social media bragging about the shootings that she had done. She was proud, and she let everybody know. She was very quick to let you know that she was violent. And that she was not afraid to shoot somebody. It was said Shakira was responsible for at least 15 shootings before she herself was... 15 shootings? One for every year she was alive. Damn, the girl. That's crazy. Damn, chill. Ah. And that was King Vaughn's rival. Yeah, she she was his rival at one time. Like she was yeah. in a ri the rival gang. Yeah, okay. yeah, she was a G. She was a G. He's a BD. Oh. And she let everybody know. She was very quick to let you know that she was violent. And that she was not afraid to shoot somebody. It was said Jakira was responsible for at least 15 shootings before she herself was eventually killed. Damn. Afterwards, a 4chan user hacked her Twitter and leaked DMs showing her and King Vaughn had this weird back and forth where That's King Vaughn was attempting about. to romance yeah, her in yeah, yeah. like a mock. You know what I'm saying? What up? I'm trying to change. Uh, what do you say? I'm trying upgrade to change you. you. Uh, upgrade I'm trying you. to change you, upgrade you. I want to nail something. What up? Damn. That's how he came? Yeah. And she said, you got fucked up, man. No bullshit. On oh, that lady, that wasn't me, but I like you for real, straight up. When all this shit over. What's he, uh, so we, what? I'm have you. Oh, sorry. He said, when all this shit over, I'm going to have you. No what? bullshit. I guess he, uh, 
He said, that wasn't me. So what? One of his homies was messaging her or something on his account? Is that what he's trying to say? That lady. On that lady that was... <clears throat> Way, I don't know, maybe it was real. Despite the fact that they were both rival gang members, as she didn't like dudes, she liked girls. But reading the tweets and listening to his interviews, you could tell King Vaughn is a clever, smooth talker, right? He's smooth, but he's also a goddamn demon, a blood. She say, Vaughn, I can't fuck with you because you kill people. Bitch, you swallow my kids. How you kill people? You kill people. The trail he seems to follow him wherever he goes. And King Von was becoming an infamous figure in the Chicago PD briefing room. So they hated him. Police Damn. were bringing him in for an armed robbery. That's trial. like John Gotti. They hated John Gotti. They couldn't stop him. Untouchable. King Von was untouchable, man. He was man. a Teflon Don. Yeah, he was untouchable, man. I mean, shit. Especially for the big boys. He possessed an illegal firearm. And they had suspicions of other stuff that they could never prove. One murder of a kid named Odell, allegedly, according to the internet detectives on Reddit, has King Von's name written all over it. It happened on a Saturday night where 24 other people were wounded across Chicago, but that wouldn't stop King Von from boasting about Odell's Damn. death on Twitter all... Damn, Odell got killed in October and crap. Play October and crap. Who gonna get killed in November? Stay tuned. Damn. And then that's when he got killed. Was in November. No, this was back. This wasn't this year. Dude, I think this was back. Oh, I know, God. but <clears throat> that's just crazy coincidence. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Yeah, All the time. Get killed yeah. in November. Yeah. This is wild. Now, finally, in 2014, the police thought they had something. Vaughn and one of his friends were at a crowded house party when a rival GD named Malcolm Stuckey was in the corner, mean mugging them. Vaughn and them took offense, immediately left the party, came back 45 minutes later, shooting at the kid Stuckey, who was outside, along with two other people who tried to run. Stuckey was killed, the two Dang. others were wounded. Dang, R.P. Stuckey. Damn. This shit, this shit is sad, man. Shit Him and Lil Dirk did that? Nah, they said just King Vaughn. Did they, they say Lil Dirk was part of that? All the time. Now, finally, in 2014, the police thought they had something. Vaughn and one of his friends were at a crowd oh, one of his party friends. when a rival GD named Malcolm Stuckey was in the corner, mean mugging them. Vaughn and then took offense, immediately left the party, came back 45 minutes later, shooting at the kid Stuckey, who was outside, along with two other people who tried to run. Stuckey was killed, the two others were wounded, and King Vaughn and his friend were snatched up by police a couple days later. After three and a half years, the trial finally started. It lasted a grand total of five days. Witnesses couldn't be located. Vaughn kept his mouth shut for the whole three years while his yeah, friend his confessed shut. to doing the shooting. His so, friend, Vaughn beat the case. His friend confessed to doing the shooting. That's like uh, that. Uh, wow. He told, what's that song? He told. But see. Why he, he told. Yeah, that's called Why <clears> He Told. He dropped that Why He Told song. That shit is dope. Y'all didn't check that shit out. He took it to trial, too. You know, nobody wants to... Everybody gets talked out of taking their Man, cases to guilty. trial. Like your lawyers are even telling you, uh, you, you want to just plead because if you take it to trial, instead of just getting five years or ten years, you might end up with 25, 35. And that yeah. scares people, and they're just like, fuck it, just give me the deal, because I don't even want to try that. Right, right. Damn. But nine times out of ten, if you take it to trial, you know, most of the time, they don't have the evidence. If you got to get you a good lawyer, definitely get you a good they lawyer. They don't have the right evidence, because it's, it's actually pretty hard to charge somebody with murder. When you take it to trial, it really is. But that's why, you know, you see all these plea deals, plea deals, plea deals. That's how people be getting, you know, murdered. Yeah, because they got to prove you <clears throat> murdered somebody versus prove that you they gotta are innocent. They got to prove. You start off innocent. Until proven guilty versus. So you start off innocent until proven guilty versus starting off guilty to proven innocent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now that's where a lot of it people really say depends. the racism start off. Because racism, we start off guilty until proven innocent versus. The difference. Well, that's because the whole jail system was set up against y'all from the jump. So, yeah, I, 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 I agree with that.
So that's what it is. Went home, and his friend got 28 years. As soon as Vaughn was out, the dude he was always arguing with on Twitter, named Wooski, who's a gangster disciple, and his mortal enemy, we was attending him. the funeral at the Bethlehem Star Battle. Hold on, what, what did she say? What did she say right Oh, and his friend got 28 years. As soon as Vaughn was out, the dude he was always arguing with on Twitter, named this nigga said, today don't care. I always do real shit. Y'all do it when y'all feelings hurt or something. I come to y'all shit by myself on board. Vaughn said, you were scared to walk in the store. You look me in the Oh, the Wooski said that. You scared. You look me in Vaughn said, oh, king. Okay. I don't care the bitch. Y'all lock that door when I try to come back in and y'all got up behind you. Wooski was a gangster oh, disciple and his mortal enemy was attending a funeral. That's what I wanted to see. Oh, you a bitch, and I'm trying to order it. Then you ain't got more than bodies in the temp than you got on my side. Bethlehem Star Baptist Church, when all of a sudden, an AK-47 pistol, AKA a Draco, was whipped out and started spraying into the crowd. Dozens of shots rang off, and Wooski was shot. Now he survived, Damn. and King Vaughn was not responsible for this, but that does not stop him from mocking him. Every his fans are diehards, right? They're crazy. They read into everything he posts, looking for clues. Like this man posted an Insta story just trying to promote his new music video. And people were reading into how many skulls he put in his caption. Like, seven skulls? That's seven bodies. King Vaughn has seven bodies. They even got to the point <laughs> where King Vaughn. I like, yep. We seen it. You gotta read between the lines. That's what he was saying, because he can't really say it. But that's what he was saying. Yeah, that's right. And King Vaughn was like, I just pressed the, the button. Exactly. Just so. press. But that's how people do. That's, that's how You got to watch what you say and what you put on social network because people will take that two different ways. Way different ways. Two or three, several, there, and use it to their best intentions of what they want to do with it. Went live on Instagram himself and said, listen, if the internet was right about the bodies people had, they would be in jail. So don't believe what anyone says. I repeat, anyone. Speculation. Right, speculation. Bless All I know is In Chicago, the clubs close at like 12, right? It doesn't go past. Damn. Damn, 12 o'clock? Damn. Damn. <laughs> Shit, that ain't, that ain't early enough it look like, nigga. Y'all niggas better close at 8. That's when the club starts popping. Right. 12, Down Shit. south, but we down south, though. I know. Them niggas might need to close at 8. Hell yeah! As soon as, no, they get, as soon as it turned dark. <laughs> nah, give them a little bit of nightlife. <laughs> Eight o'clock. Dang. Twelve because of the violence, and I know that King Von can't go to Canada to do shows. He can't go to overseas to do shows. So it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because of his history, King Von creates this allure and this personality that people want to rock with his music, but also fucks up his business opportunities because he can't leave the country. That's pretty yeah. much it for this video. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the Man, comments below. Man, can you imagine? Who you want me to cover next? If he was yeah. able to travel oh, man. out the U.S. He'd be in locked out of the situation. He'd have been blew up. But it, his name was already going to blow blow him up anyway. Golly, he was on the rise, boy. Yeah, man. R.I.P. King Von, man. We salute you, bro. Yeah, I enjoyed watching this, though. I, I did, too. too. This was awesome. Yeah, man. Hopefully, y'all enjoy this. But this was our reaction to King Von, the soft-spoken assassin, you did. If y'all want another documentary, uh, make sure y'all comment down below what documentary y'all want to see. Yep. And we will drop another banger to it, you did. But yeah, babe, I love it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? You like it, I love yeah. it. All right. But this was a subscriber request done by one of our subscribers. Salute to you, bro. I Salute. know you're watching. Salute. Thank we you. Yeah. Um, Sorry, we out this thing. <laughs> Peace. Wait, uh, you ready? That's to it. Peace. All right, we out this thing. Gang.